Well, I would like to begin by saying that the 19th March uh, 2003 was a very fateful day for all of us around the world because it was the beginning of a clearly illegal invasion. Anyone who today still wants to argue that uh, this invasion had the legitimacy of the UN Security Council is is wrong. Um, it was simply not done in accordance with Article 51 of the UN Charter. So that decision set in motion with something which in the end uh, didn't improve, but rather worsened the condition of the Iraqi people. And uh, the body that was created to prevent conflict, to solve conflicts, to make sure that wars wouldn't take place anymore, uh, was put in the icebox. Uh, two countries, the UK and the US, led by the United States, no doubt, um, decided to um, become an occupation force that seemed to have forgotten that there was something called the Hague Convention. Uh, there was something that would determine how the incoming uh, soldiers would behave. Uh, and much later, in 2011, when uh, President Obama decided to withdraw uh, U.S. troops from Iraq, um, one could make a tally of what had happened in those intervening uh, eight years. And what has happened is a frightening evidence of the disregard of all the laws that have been created uh, to prevent war crimes, to prevent crimes against humanity, and uh, the main victim, the main victim, no doubt, is uh, other people in, in, in Iraq. But they are not the only victims. Another victim is international law uh, and the institution that was meant to become the calibrator for the maintenance of international law, and that is the United Nations. So we have a pretty bad picture. And if then people come and say we don't have the evidence, then I would like to remind uh, these people how much evidence there is. How many more tribunals do we need? We had a Brussels tribunal. We had an Istanbul tribunal. We had in Kuala Lumpur for the last 10 years a, um, a tribunal, a war crimes tribunal. I'm a member of this tribunal. We have had on the 14th of December 2014, we had the release, and it was a courageous step by Senator Dianne Feinstein to release uh, the report on CIA torture. Uh, we have had in the UK the Chil Chilcot, Sir John Chilcot inquiry. Uh, we have had other evidences of the violation of the UN uh, Torture Convention and the question that one needs to ask and I hope will be asked uh, in Washington is how much more evidence do we need before finally the judicial process begins and the perpetrators are held accountable. These perpetrators sit in London, they sit in Washington and in other places but uh, they are free. Reminds me a little bit of what the Mexican ambassador in 1945 when this UN organization was created said, uh, and he did say the following. He said, we have created an institution where we can control the mice, but the tigers will continue to roam around freely. Well, those tigers that are still roaming around freely that have killed so many of their victims need finally to be held accountable. And let me, uh, in this brief intervention, just say uh, uh, a big thank you to Code Pink for having decided to have this tribunal in order to come one step closer uh, to the time when cases will be handled by courts, either at the national level and if that doesn't happen by the International Court of Justice. I should repeat that, not the International Court of Justice, but the International Criminal Court.
all good wishes to Code Pink.